Psalm 103 verse 1 says, Praise the Lord, my soul, all my inmost being, praise his holy name. Hi, my name is Silas Grant. My family has been a part of Fountain of Life for 23 years. That means four presidents, three recessions, two wars, and one great God that has kept his people. I'd like to welcome you to the online FOL experience this week. Good morning, Good morning. We're, we're the Russell Juniors, and we're here to MC your online worship experience. Justin and I met several moons ago at Fountain of Life Church in youth group, and since then we have led a life dedicated to Christ, our marriage, and our two little boys, Jaden, say hi, <laughs> and Jace, who is upstairs taking a nap. Now, unfortunately, COVID-19 has forced us into social distancing separating us from the church we love. However, all that negative situation, light can be found. For an example, the body of Christ doesn't need a building. We are the church. As believers, we live out the gospel in our words and actions. So let's take action with this online experience that has been so helpful for many reasons for our family, and we pray that it is helpful and beneficial and a blessing to yours as well. Let's get ready to worship together and be blessed. Sing along, dance, let these words be your prayer to God, and let these songs minister to you.
We told you you were going to be blessed. Show me this.
Pastor Alex has a powerful message for us this morning called New Normal, Same Old God, Part 2. But first, we have a few announcements, a scripture reading, and a solo. We'll see you at the end of this service to say goodbye. Good morning, Fountain of Life. If you've been watching these virtual worship services over the last few weeks like me, you've been thinking, something's missing. And you may not have been able to put your finger on it, but I'm gonna go with, it's been the announcements. You haven't had a chance to hear from Harry or Malika or Kim or Tyler, tell you what's going on with things in the Fountain of Life family. Well, we're back and we're gonna announce some stuff. We don't have bulletins for you to go back and review stuff, but what we do have is a website, folmadison.org, and we've also got a Facebook page. And those are gonna be really important places for you to be connected with to get more information on stuff. Now, if you've already liked the Fountain of Life's Facebook page, you're good to go. But if you haven't, and you run a search within Facebook, you're gonna learn that there's another Fountain of Life Covenant Church, and their logo's green and black, whereas ours is blue and gold. Now, we know this other Fountain of Life Church. Teeter, I don't know what you did to get your church to come in in front of ours on the search, but I'm gonna find out what it was. We both know we've been Fountain of Life for 25 years, and you named your church after ours. So I don't know how you're coming up first, but you want the gold and the, and the blue logo. You can like Cheater's Church out there in Long Beach, California, but that's not gonna help you learn what's going on here locally. So connect with the Facebook page, connect with the website, know that the email address is still active. And so if you've got a prayer request or a need or, or just need to reach out to somebody, want the pastoral staff to know something that's going on, send an email. Uh, we're still monitoring that. We've still got access to computers, obviously, and email addresses. So feel free to use that email address for any of your requests. Now, Bible study is still happening on Wednesday nights. Seven o'clock, we're getting together via a Zoom call, doing a video uh, discussion and Bible study. Still, still meeting on Wednesdays at seven for that. We're checking in with each other at 6.30. So if you want just a half hour of just interaction and, and, and seeing how friends and family are doing uh, uh, during that time, come on in at 6.30 and then Bible study starts at seven. If you need the Zoom link, reach out to Pastor Tyler. His email address is tnylan at folmadison.org. And he'll get you the Zoom link and then you can jump on and join us on Wednesday nights. Hey, listening to scripture being read is a, a pretty ancient tradition within the, the, the Christian practice. And in the coming weeks, we're gonna get some sessions set up where we get to do that, where we'll have some of our people reading scripture and have opportunities to, to listen on it. And so what I want you to do is keep an eye on the Facebook page. I told you that was gonna be one of our key places, but keep an eye on the Facebook page for details but know that in the, in the coming weeks, we're gonna get some, some scripture listening sessions set up. Also, we're working on a, a Bible story reading program for our young school age kids. Um, so, so keep an eye on, again, the Facebook page for that. We'll get some details out, but wanted you to let you know those two things in terms of scripture and scripture stories are, are coming our way. So, so keep an eye out for those. All right. Next Sunday is First Sunday, and normally First Sunday is Communion Sunday. And communion is a really important sacrament, a really important time to remember why we are who we are and remember what Jesus did for us. And so we're not gonna skip that, even though we can't be together to, to take communion to, uh, in person, we're gonna do it together uh, next week virtually. But what that means is that sometime between now and next Sunday, we need you to get your hands on um, the, the elements that you'll need. Um, you know, traditionally, that's been grape juice or wine, some, some grape-based uh, drink product, um, but, you know, and then some bread. 
what we have to remember is, is, is that you, there's no need to take unnecessary risks to, to get that. Jesus chose bread and wine because they were really common things. And he had his people remembering him connected to some really common everyday things. So if you can get some grape juice or some wine, some bread, great. But, you know, if it's, if it's orange juice and a bagel, right, we can still remember with that. So over the course of the next week, if you're out at the store or you know someone who's going or you're going to get a grocery delivery, just get some, get some grape juice, get some bread, and then join us next Sunday knowing that we're going to take communion together virtually uh, via this video uh, experience. All right. Obviously, we can't share hugs and handshakes can't greet each other in person during this time and, and for good reason, right? But we still want to see how each other are doing. So we're going to check in with a handful of FOA family members and see what they've been up to. Hey, how's it going? It's CJ. My fire brother, my good friend, and our pastor gave me a couple quarantine interview questions to answer. So here we go. What am I binge watching on TV? Right now, I'm binge watching All American and Ozark, both on Netflix, and I'm binge watching The Morning Show on Apple TV. All good shows. Check them out. My go-to comfort food will be chicken wings. I eat chicken wings all the time, if not twice a week, at least once a week. Any size, any flavor from any restaurant. Um, What have I enjoyed the most about quarantine? Not spending unnecessary money. I mean, it's crazy how much money I was spending when outside was open. So let me tell you something. When outside reopens, some things are going to change around here. Most definitely. Um, what am I looking forward to after quarantine? So number one on my list is getting a haircut because it looks a hot mess under this hat. And you can't catch me slipping like that. And also, I'm going to do some more traveling because tomorrow's not promised. And I want to get out there, you know, just explore the world a little bit more. So on Sunday morning, you're going to say, where's CJ? He's not here. He's out of town. Sorry. <laughs> Um, the last one, what social media platform have I been using the most? There has been a huge increase in the usage of Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, Snapchat, and LinkedIn. That's how bored I be. So follow me if you want to, if you can, but that's all I have for you. Have a good one. Steven, they got me for me, y'all. Hey, Paso. So we are the Lucilles, and we're talking a little bit about the quarantine. So John, what have you been able to do more of since the quarantine? Well, I've been doing a lot more Spanish and cleaning the house up and it's been keeping her pretty busy. Yeah, and as a family, uh, my grown children are here, Cassandra and John, we've been doing a lot more family Bible study, talking to God, talking about God, and that has been great. What are you most looking forward to after the quarantine? Well, I'm looking forward to traveling again, um, seeing some sights, and getting out of the house. Yeah, that will be fun. I miss doing stuff away from the house. We've been exercising in the house. I have been exercising with my son, having deep conversations with my daughter. I've been working on my novel, The Fourth One Falling. I asked God for more time to work on the novel, and I have more time to work on the novel. So it's been good. I'm looking forward to seeing people in person. I have been calling people, and that's been good. Uh, is there anything you'll miss about the quarantine? Not a single thing. <laughs> God bless, family. Hello, we are Chris and Shelley Godar, and we're here to tell you a little bit about what our quarantine has been like. Shelley, what have you been doing less of during quarantine? I have been packing zero school lunches. The boys? No, I wasn't going to say the boys. <laughs> no. <laughs> we are Chris and Xander Godar. Xander's sitting in for Josh, who was sitting in for Shelly. Um, so Shelly, what are you doing less of during quarantine? Um, I'm doing less of making lunches for the boys. Our, our children have decided that they prefer to cook their own lunches because they can choose what they want and they can have it when they want it. And I haven't had to get up and pack lunches before school since the school stopped meeting. That has been awesome. Chris, what have you been doing more of? Well, unfortunately, I hear that I have been irritating Josh and Xander more. 
That's very Since accurate. We've been spending more time together. A little editorial voice. <laughs> um, but also, we have been doing not just more of, but a totally new practice family Bible study. And that's actually been kind of fun. I don't know if the boys will admit it, but it has been. Shelly, what have you been doing more of? I have been experimenting with a few social media platforms. And last week that came in really handy because I have a coworker who decided to retire. And as the week was coming to a close, I realized her last day for work would be sitting at her kitchen table, working on her computer. And then at the end of the day, she'd close the computer and be like, okay, I guess I'm retired. And that just seemed heartbreaking. So I was able to use something called Jib Jab to send her some silly cards from all of her coworkers throughout the day. And we found other social media ways to send her things that would kind of interrupt her day and let her know we were thinking about her, we appreciated her, and um, we were gonna miss her. That was really special. Chris, what have you been binge watching? Um, well, I have been binge watching. It's a little embarrassing and I know I'm late to the party, but uh, an animated version first and then with lyrics, Hamilton. I am really, really obsessed, excited, can't get enough of Hamilton. All right, fantastic seeing everybody. As we continue back into our worship, enjoy, continue to be safe, and don't forget that even though we are away from each other, we're, we don't have to be alone. Continue to reach out to each other. Use the phone, use email, use text, use some video chats. We still need to be people marked by love and people who are looking out and reaching out for to each other. So enjoy the rest of worship service. Take care, everybody. Matthew 9, verse 27 through 31. As Jesus went on from there, two blind men followed him, calling out, Have mercy on us, son of David. When he had gone indoors, a blind man came to him, and he asked them, Do you believe that I am able to do this? Yes, Lord, they replied. Then he touched their eyes and said, According to your faith, let it be done to you. And their sight was restored. Jesus warned them sternly, See that no one knows about this. But they went out and spread the news about him all over that region. Hebrews 7, verse 22 through 26. Because of this oath, Jesus has become the guarantor of a better covenant. Now there have been many of those priests, since death prevented them from continuing in office. But because Jesus lives forever, he has a permanent priesthood. Therefore he is able to save completely those who come to God through him, because he always lives to intercede for them. Such a high priest truly needs our need, one who is holy, blameless, pure, set apart from sinners, and exalted above the heavens.
So Lex, thanks for this, for, for letting me check in. It's great technology. I had an hour and a half chat with about 12 choir members last night. I was talking with business leaders in Hong Kong the other day, um, talking with folks from Central America, South America, but at the end of the day, I'm just tired because you know, you're trying to focus on this light and do I look at the screen or do I look at the light? And um, so much better than a phone call, but it just leaves me just fatigued. It's making me tired. I even preach and do my interviews this way, but man, there's this Aretha Franklin song that's saying, who's zooming who? What a beautiful service we've had so far. What a powerful virtual online worship experience. I want to thank everyone from Silas to Kirk Franklin and his friends to Justin and Christine Conklin, kids who grew up in this church, fell in love at this church, were married in this church, Eric Porter, who always delivers with announcements, all the people that did the cool things with the greetings, to young brother Novian um, Sims, who did the, the scripture reading. And um, it's just beautiful. I had to put that part in about, about Zoom because, um, man, it's just fatiguing. Um, we're just on these calls all day. And so I just have to little put that little piece in just to let you know, um, you know, it just drains you because you have to look at a camera like I'm doing now when I'm preaching and be so focused. And so it's just draining. You know, when I was a kid, we would share testimonies. And uh, people would inevitably say at the end of whatever their little testimony or speech was, pray my strength in the Lord. And that was just a way of saying, you know, I'm feeling some draining on me. I'm feeling some pulling on me. Pray my strength in the Lord. So I'm just asking you all to pray my strength in the Lord. I'm, I'm doing OK. Um, I face the same kinds of things you all do, thinking about family members and mom and family and ministry and workers and all those things, our nation, our world. But I want you to pray my strength in the Lord, because you know what? I'm determined to really be what God wants us to be. So let's just pray for a moment. Although my body gets weary, I'm excited in my soul and I'm excited about this message that, that I want to share with you. Jesus, give us strength today to follow your heart and to pursue it. Open our minds and our understanding to, under, to, to grasp how powerful our God is. May we lean into that God, receive strength from that God and honor that God Oh God, hold our dreams, hold our hearts, hold our families, hold our nation, hold our world, hold our governments, hold our economy. God, it just seems like everything's on shutdown and we're working to squeeze out of not my will, yours be done. So come on, Jesus, show yourself strong and breathe on your people. This is your world. You saved it. You know how to straighten it. Have your way in Jesus name. Amen. Hey, before I get into this message today, the one that is, that's entitled um, New Normal, but Same Old God, Part 2. Next week, I'm beginning a series for all of May that's called The Church Has Left the Building, dot, 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 but not its mission. The Church Has Left the Building, but not its mission. Because the Church of Jesus Christ has got to understand how do we function now when we are not in the security of this facility, of our facilities? And how do we find God and preach his son, Jesus Christ, in a new normal? We're going to find out. We're going to talk about it. It's going to be powerful. Um, I love the passage in, in Matthew where Jesus is doing his ministry. And he's walking about, and it was not uncommon for people to follow Jesus. It was not uncommon for people, for people to call out and say, hey, because they wanted something. Now, the others wanted to, some wanted to see tricks, but others wanted to be touched by the hand of God. And so there were a couple of men who were walking. And it says here um, that as Jesus went from there, two blind men followed him, crying out, have mercy on us, son of David. And so Jesus is walking and they're asking for mercy. So it says Jesus goes inside 
And he says to them, do you believe I can do what you've asked? They say, oh yeah, yeah, we can believe. We can believe, we believe it, we believe it. And then Jesus healed them. He said, according to your faith, the only warning he gave them was that they wouldn't go out telling people. Because once people found out who Jesus was and what he was doing, it would stop his ability to preach, to move about freely. Um, the other passage that I use is from Hebrews 7. And it says in, in verse 25, Therefore he, being Jesus, is able to save completely those who come to God through him because he always lives to intercede for them. He, Jesus, always lives to intercede for them, to plead their case. If those of you know your attorneys, you know the legal world, he's representing us, pleading our cause, our case on the right hand of the Father. He's pleading our case. So we find ourselves where we are and overwhelmed, overwhelmed. You know, we could handle a week or two. We've been out of church for six weeks. Many of you have been out of work for six, seven weeks, out of your office, out of your buildings. Um, I jokingly put up a picture on um, on Instagram, I think it was, talking about the excitement I get on Wednesday mornings because I can walk down the driveway and put my garbage can out. I don't have the mask. I don't have the glove. I can just walk outside like a normal citizen and just come back in. But I get excited because there's a rhythm. There's something to do. There's so much that's new, that's new. But I got to admit that in the midst of figuring out what's new, what's going on, when we say everything's changed, we say everything's changed. You know, someone wrote, the earth has shifted on its axis. Yeah, you know, I love props. This is right here in my study. The ch church has shifted. The world has shifted on its axis. That means the very thing that supports it, the very thing upon which it rests, its security, its stability, it's shifted. But you know, an axis is an imaginary there's no metal pole. There's no huge pole that's out there someplace that's holding all this together. Unless you're talking about the finger of God. Unless you're talking about the word of God. Unless you're talking about the truth of God. Now, God uses gravity and these other kinds of things. But what I mean is, it is not the axes that holds our world together. It's God. And so it's, it. in rethinking our reality, the question isn't what do we do when everything has shifted the question is, what do we do when everything but God has shifted? Because these things have moved. The economy has moved and humanity has moved and nations have moved either closer together or further apart. People have moved. Offices have moved. Businesses. But what does it mean that God is in the same place? What does it mean that God hasn't shifted? And even though we're in these spheres where the shift is moving us, the shift is pulling us, the shift is pushing us. But what do we do? while it's doing all of these things to contort us and move us, and God is still there. Do we reach to reestablish the world that was shakable? Do we wit? Do we reach to put things back together in a world that is unsettled? Or do we, in the midst of this, learn to cry out to our God, who is unchanging and unfailing, and begin to ask God, where are you? In Genesis, when Adam sinned, Adam and Eve sinned, God came and said, Adam, where are you? Oh, come on, God's omnipresent. God's everywhere. God knew exactly where Adam was, but it was a question of positioning. It was a question of covenanting. It was a question of what have you done to disconnect us? My breath is in you, boy. What have you done? Where have you gone? Something's missing. Something's changed. So in the world, in this world where things have shifted and God has not changed, we're asking God, where are you? The question isn't, where have you gone? The question is, where have we gone? Because God will be where God has been. God will do what God has done. God will say what God has said. So the question is not, how have you moved? How have you changed? How have you shifted? Because even though when it seems things have shifted out of sorts, how do we not know that they're really not leaning towards God? How do we know that this is not leaning towards God? So how do you gain your orientation in a world that is so disoriented? How do you get your focus in a world that is so unfocused? How do you get your center in a world that is so uncentered? Well, we got to go to the word. Well, we've got to go to God. We got to go to Jesus. 
He asked these men, do you believe I can do this? Do you know there comes a time where God needs you of your own volition, out your own mouth to say what you believe, what you want, what you need, what you're desperate for. Have you opened your mouth to tell God what you need? And I know we, we need jobs and security and homes. We know that. But do you need faith? Do you need peace of mind? Is this raising up or awakening anxiety? Do you, do you need calmness? Do you need assurance? Are you uncertain about what happens after life? Do you need God or his word or his people to help you to understand what it means to not be alive in this world or what it means to be present with the Lord? Do you wonder what it means to be ready for that next step? Let's talk about it. Let's pray about it. Jump in Bible study. Stay tuned in to the preaching and teaching here. But God's got us in this world or the next, in this life or the next. God has got us. And listen, I'm in no hurry to get out of here. I'm not trying to get sick. I've got masks and gloves and cleanser and Lysol and bleach and pine saw and blessed oil. COVID-19 is not going to chase the holiness out of me. And so, so, but in this midst of all this changing, how do we lean into, how do we lean towards, how do we love a God who is faithful, who is real, who is powerful? In the Hebrews passage in chapter seven, the statement is made, he is able to free anyone. He's able to save anyone. Why? Because one, he is Jesus and he's raised from the dead. Two, he's sitting next to the father who raised him from the dead. Three, he intercedes on our behalf. Before you wake up, the Lord has already pledged your case. Before you even show up in court, he's already laid out the dockets. Before your eyes open and your feet hit the floor, he's already talked to the Father about your needs, your fears, your family, your soul, your life. My uncle used to say when he preached, who wouldn't serve a God like this? Pure religion makes you want to be perfect so that you can be acceptable to a God. Christ has already put in a days. No, no, no. An eternity worth of work before I even get up in the morning. Thank you, Jesus. Three things I want you to know as we consider what it means to have a new normal, but same old God. I want you to take confidence in that same old God. Scripture exists for us to show us what that same old God did in creation, what that same old God did in redeeming his people from slavery, that same old God who gave prophets and rulers, that same old God who when humanity walked away from him, built a new humanity through Abraham and prophesied that there would be a seed of Abraham through David's throne who would come into the world. His name would be Jesus, whose name Emmanuel means God is with us, who would bring those of us who aren't Jewish into the family of God. You see, the God who doesn't change has always had an eye on you, an eye on humanity and an eye on the planet Earth. I don't understand everything that's going on, but I know that God does. And I'm not just a foolish, empty-headed, religious person. I've got good sense. And there's no way that God is going to let the enemy or COVID-19 or anything take away God's legacy and heritage. That's who you are. That's who you are. You are God's legacy. You are God's heritage. Let me move along. I'm running out of time. Three things I want you to know. God doesn't change. Methodologies may, timing may, but God doesn't change. In Malachi 3 and 6, God says, I am the Lord God. I am the Lord God, and I don't change. I don't change. We said, oh, everything's changed. Everything's changed. Not, no, 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 not everything. Not everything is new. Some things are the same. The word of God, the power of God, the truth of God, the plan of God, the authority of God. Yeah, that's the same. God told it, Moses when Moses was debating with God, when God was giving Moses a call to go challenge Pharaoh to let God's people go. And God said to Moses, who should I tell them sent me? And he said, tell them I am. I am. Not I am the good God, I am the religious God, I am the Catholic God, I am the Presbyterian God, I'm the holiness God. I am, I am God. I am the 
fills everything. It's like this variable, like I am food, I am light, I am life, I'm hope, I'm existence, I'm past, present, future. I am, I am like, I am, I'm bigger than what he can think. I'm bigger than what he can find. I'm bigger than his plethora of gods. I'm bigger than his wealth. I'm bigger than his throne. I'm bigger than his tombs, his pyramids. I'm bigger than the stars. I am. Like, I won't even qualify by saying what that is. Just know I am it. Life. Everything bows to me. Death. Sickness. People bow to me. I am. Tell him I am has sent you. You know, when Jesus was in the garden and they were coming to get him for his crucifixion. And they said, we're seeking Jesus of Nazareth. And Jesus says, I am he. Them bad boys fell down. Read the scripture. Check the book. When he said, I am, something of that deity came up through his belly and through his throat and out his mouth. When he said, I am, the earth moved. Those men's knees weakened and they fell to the ground. He had to help them up so they could arrest him. Because he stated, I am. The same way God told Moses to tell Pharaoh, I am. He is the God who has covenanted with us and he is faithful. God is faithful. He is faithful. He knew today when he made his covenant with us. God knew today was going to happen when he saved you. God knew today was going to happen when he gave Jesus. Come on, everything has changed. Not in heaven. Not in God's economy. God knew today was going to come just like God knows tomorrow is going to come. That gives me comfort that today has not surprised God. Wall Street has not surprised God. The deaths from COVID-19 has not surprised God. I want you to also know that Jesus revealed to us the nature of God, not the mood of God, not the emotion of God, but the nature, the character. Listen, the nature and the character is who you are when no one's looking. When times are hard, your nature, your character is what you go back to. People will say, well, if you don't get it changed, in a pinch, you'll lie again. You'll fight again. Like whatever's in you. My grandmother used to sing a song, everything in you's got to come out. If you want to be like Jesus when he comes, everything in you's got to come out. But there's nothing but goodness in God to come out. There's nothing but righteousness in God to come out. There's nothing but love in God to come out. So Jesus came to us to reveal the nature of our unchanging God. This is who God is. This is what God does. I love that this God who doesn't change said, try me. Whether it's giving or whether it's praying, try me. I'm going to be the same. Morning, night, fall, winter, rich. Just try me. I'm going to be the same. Try me. I'll hear you. Call out to me. I'll know your needs before you even ask me. Try me. Because I don't change. God, are you still good? Yeah. Hey, God, it's been 100 years. Yeah, I'm still good. Hey, God, it's been 1,000 years. Hey, I'm still good. Hey, God, there's been wars and rumors of war. I'm still good. First thing I want you to know is that your God doesn't change. Your God doesn't change. Everything has shifted, but God is not everything. God is above everything. So what does the stable God want to say to his child in this unstable world? That's what we're leaning into here. Second thing I want to say is that God does not reject those who are hungering for him. God does not reject those. Uh, there's a passage where a man came to Jesus and said, can you heal my son? And Jesus said, do you believe I can do this? Again, he's asking a question. Now, in Matthew, in, in Matthew 9, he asked the question. He said, oh yeah, oh yeah, God, you can do this. But then in this other passage, the man wants to say yes. And then when he's about to say it, his, that spirit grabs his son he begins to writhe and falls down, writhing and foaming. He says, he's looking at Jesus. He's looking at his son. Um, he says, uh, uh, I, I believe, but help my unbelief. You know what? That's one of my favorite prayers in scripture. I would love to always say, I believe Jesus. Oh, Jesus, I believe. That man saw Jesus so calm, but he saw that that demon had his baby and his little boy was writhing and foaming and contorting. He was afraid if he said, I don't believe his faith wouldn't heal him. But he's also afraid that if he lied and said, yeah, I believe that his lack of faith would risk his son's well-being. And he looked to the Jesus who understood. He said, some days I do. Some days I do believe. Some days this makes sense to me. 
Some days I see you. Some days I sense you. Some days it's like I can smell you. But then there are other days. You got to help me. There, there are other days. This don't seem right. This doesn't seem fair. You know, think about what my mom prayed when um, we're in the midst of, um, I think it was Lexi's birth. And she was so small that she was, she was um, threatening to be lost. And my mom prayed, God, it's, it's us. You know, our family has served you. Our family started a church. My boy preached when he was young. God, it's us. Y'all, sometimes I want to pray, God, it's us. It's, it's us. You know, we thought these things happened to them. Typhoons and storms. That happened to them. That happened to the people over there. That happened to Phil and Katrina. That happened to Haiti. Look at what's happening to us. God, it's us. Some days I do believe. Some days it's well with my soul. Some days this too shall pass. Some days trouble don't last all the way. Some days we don't know what to do, but our eyes are on you. Some days. Oh, but then there's some days you wake up and you're like, I, I believe. But you got to help my unbelief. I, I see my child struggling. I, I see my economy struggling. I see my people struggling. I see another disease that's killing more black people. Than any other group that's attacking us, like dementia has attacked us, diabetes has attacked us, and prostate cancer. These things have attacked us. Infant mortality. It's like, God, can black people catch a break? Can poor people catch a break? Yeah, I believe, but you gotta you gotta help my unbelief, God. You gotta help me out here. I can try to meet you halfway. I love it because this was a negotiating prayer. The blind man said, oh, heck yeah. Oh yeah, open these eyes. Jesus even said, your faith, be it according to your faith. The woman who was bleeding, your faith has made you whole. Go your way, daughter, your faith has made you whole. But this dad, he said, um, um, I don't, I don't know. I, I, what is belief? What, what is faith? What is truth? Who is God? What is this that's grabbing my son? I don't. What, what, believe what? Believe that this isn't real? Believe that this is not my son? Believe that this is not the way it is? Believe that it's going to stop today? Is it going to stop on the way home? Is it going to come back tomorrow? What if you change your mind? If you break this spell, would somebody else put another one on him? Did I do something wrong? Am I cursed? What do you mean? Do I believe there's too many variables here? God, we got people that lost their jobs. Yeah, 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 we believe, but... Help my unbelief. God, our children are struggling. They're experiencing the anxiety that babies shouldn't experience. Yeah, we be but help our unbelief. We don't have test kits. Not enough. Vaccine. Month, year out. Yeah, we believe. But help our unbelief, God. Yeah, I believe. Kind of. You gotta name your unbelief. Name it. Own it. Some of y'all aren't gonna like that. Name it. Own it. I'm scared. I'm worried. I'm shaken. I'm weakened. I'm depressed. Own it. Because only if you own it can you give it to somebody else. How are you gonna give Jesus something you don't own? So once you own it, give it away. The Bible says, cast your burdens on the Lord because he cares for you. Cast your burdens on the Lord because he cares for you. Cast your burdens on the Lord. So only God, that man said, I believe. But you help my unbelief. He said, yes and no. You ever say yes and no to God? You ever say, ah, uh, kind of. Sometimes, maybe, perhaps. I have family members who say, mayhaps. Maybe so. Maybe not. I believe. I feel that way today. I felt that way yesterday. Yeah, I believe. Open up my unbelief. That quasi-faith, that quasi-doubt. But you know what? It didn't chase Jesus away. You get folks who got stuff and they say, nope, I'm not claiming it. Nope, I'm not claiming it. I understand faith, but I also, I also understand foolishness. How can you give something away that you don't own? You're not saying that you want to succumb to it. You're just acknowledging. This man said, yeah. But up my own.
unbelief. Jesus didn't say, you heathen, you infidel, why don't you believe in me? Jesus delivered that man's son. He delivered that man's son. Because sometimes when you doubt, you ask God for help. He shows you who he is. So that man said, help my unbelief. Jesus said, I'll help your unbelief. Get up. And that demon let go of that boy. And he got up and shook himself and said, Dad, woo, thank you, Jesus. Sometimes you can't get the real faith until you claim the fake faith. I believe, but help my unbelief. I want to tithe, but help my unbelief. I want to pray, but help my unbelief. I want to lay hands on the sick, but help my unbelief. I want to work for you, but help my unbelief. Own that stuff because God can handle your doubt. If he can own it. But he can't own it until you do. Oh, thank you, Jesus. And the last point is, our God is a covenant keeper. What does it mean that God keeps a covenant? It's not a transaction. I will work for you if you pay me. When you stop paying me, guess what? I will stop working. And guess what? When you stop working, I'll stop paying. It's transactional. If you give me a dollar, I'll give you a hamburger. That's transactional. But a covenant says, if you're not faithful to me, I'll still be married to you. If you leave me and cheat, I'll still be faithful to you. If you turn your back, when you find out that that's not your lover, that's not your friend, that's not your way, that's not you, and you come back, I'll be here. God made a covenant with us. God made a covenant with us for better or for worse, for richer, for poor, in sickness and in health. God made a covenant, a covenant that God Almighty made that is built upon the very strength and knowledge of our God and God's heart. Press to know your covenant in God. Scripture tells you the nature of God so that you can trust. I want to encourage you to jump into Bible study, get in your word, connect with folks, understand your covenant. Because you will understand it is impossible for God to change. Because let me tell you something. The God who made a covenant with you, let me tell you some things about this God. God cannot lie. God will not promise more than God can deliver. God doesn't sleep. God is not weak. God is not on vacation. God is as committed to us as God was committed to Christ. God is as committed to us as God was to Christ. How do I know this? Because Jesus, after his resurrection, said, I'm going to my God and your God. We share a common God. My God and your God. Jesus used to talk about God like God was the God of the Old Testament. He talked about God in a way that seemed distant. But when he got up out of the grave, he said, I'm going to my God and your God, my Father. Do you think God's going to reject us? God would have to reject Jesus in order to reject me. That if God and I don't sync up, it is because I reject God. Because through Christ, the resurrection of Christ meant that God cannot, will not ever reject me. If there's any distance, it's on my part. We're holding that God in common. I want you to get to know the names of God. Because it tells you about the nature of God. God's very names, God's very nature means I am the God who heals. I am the God that supplies your need. I am the God, your banner. I'm the God, your shelter. I'm the God, your well-being. It is no more easier for God to reject me than it is for God to stop being God. And when you know that, when you know that, it's hard for you to take your lips and say, everything's changed, even God. I can't even say that. Everything's changed but God. Everything has changed but God. Church has changed. Oh, but God. The God who was there for Abraham. The God who was there for Daniel and the prophets. The God who was there with Jesus. The God who was there for Paul and for Peter and for the disciples. The God who was there for the founding mothers and the founding fathers, the God who's always been, the God who's given us wisdom, the God who measures the depths of the sea in the hollow of his hand, the God who puts the stars in order, that God is your God today. 
the God who knows the hairs on your head, the God who gives you your first breath and receives it when it's time to go home, that God is on our side. The God who tells the sun, wake up, puts the earth to sleep at night. The God who draws the boundaries and tells the seas and rivers and lakes and the creeks where to start, where to stop. The God who makes the animals moo and bark and meow and the birds to sing and chirp. That God is in control and I seek that God and I seek that God for you and I pray that that God would be real and that that God would sweep over your soul and that that God would shake inconsistent faith out of us and shake fear out of us and shake doubt out of us and shake love and power and sound mind into us. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to your name, God. Thank you, Jesus. We said we want to know him. We said we want to be people of the book. In my lifetime, there's never been a more pressing, palpable, obvious time in which God is orchestrating something. I don't want to miss what he's doing. I don't want my ears covered. I don't want my eyes covered. I don't want my soul worried, waited. So we're going to lean in and say, God, who never changes, show us what you're up to so we know what to get up to. Show us what you're up to so we can run with you, God. Your God doesn't change. Your God is a covenant keeper. and Your God does not reject those who run after him. What you need, God's got it. If you're watching this program and you want to know this God, you want to walk with this Jesus, you're good, you're religious, but you don't know what it means to really walk with Jesus, to have the fire of Jesus in your bones and the word of him alive inside your heart. I want you to email us or go to our website at folmadison.org. There's a button that says stay connected. You can fill things out and say, I'm a new believer. I want someone to call me. I want someone to pray with me. Go to that website. We're here every Sunday. At 10 a.m. Central Standard Time, come and share this link. We can help you to connect with Bible study, help you grow in your faith. If you walked away from your faith, write us and say, I'm helping to restore my faith. I don't have a church. We'll be your cyber church until we can direct you to one in your community. But we want to be able to, to encourage you and to love you, to let you know that our God is real. Now, I just preached all of this. Doesn't mean that I don't get frightened and that I'm not concerned. Doesn't does not mean that at all. But it means at the end of the day, the God who makes that sun rise in the east and sets in the west, He knows me, He holds us, and He is in control. And He's got us. I found out life we need to lean into each other. If you all have got some ideas of how I. We can make this online virtual experience better or weekly mailings better. Go to the website, hit Stay Connected. Give us a suggestion. Email us at office at folmadison.org. Follow us on social media. There are links and ways to do that here. And if you're part of Fountain of Life, you know that it is your giving and your generosity that has enabled us to keep this ministry going and will enable us to be powerful force in this community. There are people whose lives are just shaken up and we want to be there with food and connection and counsel and music and community and Fountain of Life we will. And you don't have to be in Madison to help us do this. There's a link right here in this on this YouTube page where you can become a part of supporting what we're doing in the community. This money is not for me. It's not for our ministry staff. It's for the community and the world. We want to show this community that ours is a generous God. People are going to need rent assistance and food. They're going to even need a place to come and eat that food sometime. This is an opportunity for us to do some Matthew 25 ministry, visiting people, loving people, giving clothes to the naked, visiting those who are trapped and snared in poverty. This is a moment for us to be the church. So please take a moment, even before you leave this site, just click the link. Make a gift of any amount, we'd appreciate it because it helps us to touch this community and the world. We want to let the world know that our God is alive and our God cares. Let me pray for you. Jesus, I pray for your strength, for your people, that we would know our God and the covenant we have with God. Things have shifted, but you have not, oh God. And yeah, there's a new normal. 
But our God does not change. Our God does not change. Our God does not change. Breathe on the folks who are watching this. They may feel the presence of God. Let someone who's never felt it before, or someone who's walked away from it, feel it brand new. Holy Spirit, move now. Move now. Move now. In Jesus' name, Amen. Hey, enjoy your Sunday. Enjoy your brunch. Um, I'm about to go have some grits and some eggs. And some Tennessee pride sausage. Maybe some biscuit. But spend today praying for room in your heart to become more intimately acquainted with this phenomenal God who thinks enough about you. to give his son. Come on and get some of this Holy Ghost. Come on and get some of this joy. Get connected with us. All right? All right? Thank you so much. God bless you. See you next week. Please share this. Figure out how to do a watch party. Get this message out to someone else. This is an evangelistic opportunity. Do it. Go. We've entered to worship. We've tuned into worship. Exit to serve. Oh, 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 last thing. You heard the announcement that Eric made. We're doing communion next Sunday. So bring your juice. And listen, I'm just so glad we're doing it. I won't even ask y'all what's in the cup. I won't even ask you what kind of juice it is. Just bring it. And your favorite bread, cornbread, anything. Bring it. Biscuit. We're going to have communion together. All right, y'all take care. I love you so much. Pastor Jackie and I love you so much. I'm going to try to bring her on. She's kind of shy. But I know people have said, we want to see Pastor Jackie. So I'm going to bring her on so y'all won't think, you know. I locked you in the garage or something. I love you all. Have a great day. We so enjoyed hosting your online worship experience this morning. Please know that you and your family are in our thoughts and our prayers during this time. Have a great week and be safe as you exit the serve. So life.